Okay, good morning, class. So today we're looking at financial maths. The last exercise in finance. Or the last example for the last exercise in finance. So today we're looking at analyze investments and loan options. Okay? So when you make a decision about which investment option or loan option to choose, you must recognize that there are a number of factors that should be taken into account. So yesterday I've explained to you that um, for investments, if you're investing money or lump sum into an account, we would want to get between um, different uh, options, we want to get a better or the most interest out. Not so. Whereas if it's a loan, um, we would want to pay the least interest. Okay. So again, for investment, we're going to look at where you give where the return is higher, while for a payment, we're going to look where the, um, the interest is lower. Okay. So investment compound interest results in exponential growth, whereas simple interest results in linear growth. It will almost always be to an advantage to choose compound interest investment unless a simple interest offer is a much higher than the compound interest and the investment is uh, shorter. Okay, always compound interest would get you a better return in the long run. Okay, if you look at, at um, the shorter period, it might be that simple interest would be a better option provided the simple interest rate is the same. Or um, a bit higher. All right. Also because uh, the effect of the exponential growth, the more frequently the interest is compounding, compounded, sorry, the better for the investor. So we're looking at example, and this example one is on page. Page 18. This is the uh, examples for exercise 9. Okay, exercise 9, which is on page 18. This is the example on page 82. Okay. So Alice, Ben and Fatma each win 500,000 rand in a competition. Okay. wonder what competition is this. Imagine. But anyway, Alice invests her money in an investment offering 20% simple interest. Ben invests his money at 10% compound interest, and Fatima invests her money 9.8% compounded daily. Determine how much money each person, person has over, um, after 15 years and then decide who made the best choice. Okay, so we've got Alice. Call it A for now. So it's 20% simple interest. So if you look here, 20% opposed to 10%, already it looks like um, Alice has a better option. But this is simple interest. So the growth is not going to be that great. Okay? But so we can't just look at the, 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 the interest rate. Okay? And I said, this looks better. But probably isn't. Okay. So we will follow the formula A is equal to P into 1 plus I times A. So the principal is 500,000 into 1 plus I, which is 0, 0,2 multiplied by N. And how many is this for? 15 years. Okay, so it's going to be 500,000. Okay into 1 plus 0 0.2 times 15. Is that return of uh, 2 million? Okay. Pin. Is this B you could have written? Pin. Invest his money at 10% compound interest. So follow the formula, A is equal to com, um, compound interest, yeah. A is equal to P into 1 plus I to the exponent in, so it's 500,000 into 1 plus I, which is 
is 10%, so Z of Pama 1 to the exponent, 50. 5 million, 0 0.1 to the exponent, 50. 2 million, 88,624 and 9 cents. 2 million, 88,624 and, and 9 cents. So at this point, it looks like Ben has the better option between the two. Okay? And Fatima, we get the little gift. So we deposit the money safe. Compounding, but compounded daily. So it's I. So the, the formula is written down already. So it's going to be 500,000 into 1 plus 0, 0,98, 0, 0,098 compounded daily. So it's 365 to the 365 times 50. Okay, so although she has the lowest interest rate, compounding is compounding much more than uh, B. Okay, so that would be 0 0.998 um, compounded daily is uh, 360. Zero comma zero. You are thinking now. Fatima did that. Good investment. There you go. Two million one hundred seventy four thousand. Two million one hundred seventy four thousand. Um, one hundred eighteen and fifty five cents. Therefore, who's making the best investment? Therefore, Fatima is making the best investment. Why? Because it's that better return. Okay, all is caram, no? <laughs> Any confusion there, people? No? Let me know when I make a mistake, okay? Retirement annuity. Retirement annuity, a future value annuity where regular payments are invested into an account to save money for retirement, okay? Retirement annuity, when you save money for retirement, the retirement annuity is a good option. The longer an investment, investor pay into such an annuity without withdrawing from the investment, the better. Some people prefer to invest their money into the stock exchange. Here you can buy partial ownership into a company and benefit from the profits of that company. The stock exchange investment can be risky since it relies on the performance of the company in which you have chosen to invest. A, le a less risky way of investing uh, in the stock exchange is to buy units in a unit trust. The unit trust is a pool um, money of many investors where they invested the financial markets throughout a single collective investment scheme. Okay, so this basically they're giving you like different ways of doing this. Okay, if I had a lot of money, which I don't, <laughs> I would probably buy property. Property is a better return in today's trade. Okay. Yeah, and in considering our market in South Africa, okay, Cape Town namely, uh, we, have, we will get a better, a good return on property at this point, okay. Well, let's look at the next example. Kabil and Ismail are twins, okay. On the 30th birthday, they decide to save for their retirement. Camille invests 1,000 each month in the retirement annuity that gives him 10% per annum compounded quarterly. Camille's first payment starts one month after his birthday, which means to say one month after his birthday is in line with the formula. Not so. His money invests 1,000 uh, rand each month into a unit trust. Okay. They both consider retiring at the age of 60, so it's 30 years from now. 
And in uh, Vishti Gaisla Mount, the investment have yield, which means to say what they have for return. Since the world money market is at the low, at this time, Ismail investment is worth 1.5 million. Okay? He told the value of uh, Kamil's investment on his 60th birthday after he has made his monthly payment for that month. Okay, which means again in line with that formula, compare Camille's investment with Ismail's investment at that stage. Okay, so the one is given while the other one needs to be calculated. Okay, are we still on page 82? So, uh, Cam uh, Camille. So it's an investment on a monthly basis, so if is equal to x into 1 plus i to the exponent n minus 1, all over. So it makes an investment of a thousand rand per month, so it's 1 plus i, which is, what is his interest? 10% compounded quarterly. Okay? But is the compounding in line with is the frequency of his investment. No. So which means to say I must get it in line with this. Not so? So I'm going to use that formula 1 plus i effective equals 1 plus i because I'm calculating quarterly and I want to convert it to monthly. Okay, but what do you notice? Hang on, that is the same. Not so? So which means to say that 1 plus i to the quarter over quarter to the 4 is equal to 1 plus i to the 12 over 12 to the 2. Okay, that could also be in brackets if you want. Okay? So, we're converting 10% quarterly. So it's 1 plus 0, 1 over 4 to the 4 is equal to 1 plus um, compounded so you add the 12 over 12 to the 12. Okay, so we're going to take the 12 and read both sides. Okay. And then I take the 1 over, and then I multiply it by 12. So the i to the 12 is equal to the 12 to the root of 1 plus 0 0.1 over 4 minus 1 times 12 by 2. Or times 12 and then by 100 to get the rate. Okay, so that gives us 12 open brackets, the 12 to the root of 1 plus 0 0.1 over uh, 4 to the 4. I forgot to write that in. one. When multiply that by 100, I get the rate of 9.92 percent. And this is now compounded monthly. Okay, so now with that, I can calculate this now. So 0 0.092 over 12 to the exponent 12 times. How many years is it going to be? For 15 years. Minus 1. And this all over i, which is 0, 0, 0.092 over 2. Let's go. It'll be 1,000 rand. Um, into 1 plus that answer over 12, which is 1,200 in this case. Um, to the exponent 12 times 15. Yes? Sorry? Oh, I'm confusing you with 15,000. Uh, Where am I getting 15? Okay, I don't know. So you must be 15, thank you. Uh, minus 1. This all over 0, 0, 0.092. Is me two million?
Two million three hundred and ninety four thousand. Yes? Why did you say twelve thousand on top of the denominator? Did I make a mistake? Oh this year? Yeah. Because um this answer on the calculator was this year, nine comma nine two. That was the answer. So normally when I uh, plug it in here, it's 0, 0, 0.092. So in my head, I'm already dividing by um, 100. But the calculator has this as the answer. Huh? Is that the answer correct in the... Huh? No. Okay. Yeah? Is the answer not the same as mine? Okay, what is the answer? Two million nine hundred a day. One million. Okay, so let me just check here quickly. It's investment. One thousand rand. Um, they got zero comma zero nine two over hundred. Over twelve. One million nine hundred and eight thousand eight hundred. Is that one? Yes, sir. Now, isn't that the answer? Two million? Did they get this answer here that I have here? Yes. Okay, let me just check again. So it's going to be. Okay, but. The twelfth root of open brackets one plus zero point one over four. Oh yes, but now remember that the time period. You may first see before I now explain that. So I multiply this by 100, isn't it? And I got 9,92, right? I? Then I punch that into that formula. The 1,200. Which I'm still sticking to. You see, this year, see I get the same answer. But this is by using the answer button on the calculator. Okay? But I'm getting more than what the calculator is giving me. So, usually, we should put like answer because you're using the at the denominator. Yes. Yes. But, but, yeah, that's also true. That's my mistake. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Two million two hundred and twenty one thousand two hundred thirty five. Okay, so that's fairly close. <laughs> two million two hundred and twenty five. <laughs> but you see, they rounded off the answer, and I used the answer button. Okay, so uh, let's just confirm that. So this was using the answer, the answer that the answer button. We got two million two hundred twenty-one thousand two hundred and thirty-five comma uh, three uh, nine. So it's four. Using the rounded off answer, this is using zero comma zero nine two um, as your I value. It's work that out. So that is uh, 0, 0,092. 
zero comma zero ninety. Yeah. Oh, you're on the ball today. <laughs> You're going to get 100% for finance. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that gives me an answer of 1 million um, 908,835,01. Um, what was the answer? This one, yeah. So if you look at that small variation on your interest, they, they, they round it down here in this case. That small variation gives us a difference of 235,42. cents. Can you see the difference there? It's full variation. But now in the exam, we accept both. Okay. We're using the answer button or you have rounded or it doesn't know. Okay. Right, let's look at the next question they're asking us. The twins decide uh, the twins decide to work for a further five years. On the 65th birthday, Ismail receives a payout of 3,500,000 from his unit trust investment determined whether he will be better off that cameo who has continued paying into his annuity for five years. So nothing changes in terms of his, um, his loan. Oh, is his, his agreement on the investment. The interest rate stays the same and the installment stays the same. The installment uh, amount. So let's see. I'm going to use the same uh, formula. Same substitution. So we're going to have your FB now. It's going to be 1,000 rand into 1 plus uh, 0, 0, 0,092 over 12 to the exponent 12 times. Now instead of 30, I'm going to have 35 minus 1, and this is all over 0, 0,092 over 12. All right. So that will simply give us, I'm just going to go with 0, 0,092. I'm not going to go with the answer button now, okay? So we will get more uh, closer to the, the answer that the text begins. That gives you 3 million. And ninety-four thousand two hundred and fifty-seven, comma thirty. So who is getting a better return? Remember, this is Camille, no? So Ishmael would get a better return. Why? So Ishmael gets three million five hundred thousand. Okay. Again, this is going to be safer. Okay, however, that is giving you a better return. Okay. That it? And there's one thing they, they, they speak about, which is pyramid schemes, no? I don't speak about stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> And you won't also be tested in your exam. Okay, so that brings us to the end of finance. You know that you should be able to do exercise. You know, exercise. Exercise 9 on page 87. All right. Okay, so. Uh, we were done, but we were not.
So load options. Okay, so as we said initially, if here is my my Oh yeah. Okay. So load options. In a learning situation, instead of uh, benefiting from the interest, the borrower uh, pays the interest. So when you go to a bank and you make a loan, you pay interest to the bank. Okay. It's always important um, as a borrower to choose an option where the interest is paid, uh, interest paid is minimized. As you said earlier on, if you pay less, if it's a loan, we want to pay less. If it's an investment, we want a better return. Okay. The options should be taken into account. Um, these options should be taken into account. In a simple interest loan agreement, interest is calculated on the original debt. Okay. Whereas in compound interest, the interest calculated on the reducing balance, which benefits the borrower. So if you buy a, a tumble dryer, the tumble dryer um, um, is going to charge you simple interest on it. So if you buy a tumble dryer, it's going now for about 15,000 rand. And the add your interest of about 15,000 rand. You're going to pay the tumble dryer over three years. And after two months, you guys got your your, um, your your increase now. You became your successful chartered accountant. You can pay that fifteen thousand euro after say two months or three months. And you now say, okay, you go to the to the to the um, to the shop. You're gonna now pay your your balance of. They're gonna charge you to settle that account thirty thousand. Even so after two or three months. Whereas if you now have borrowed thirty thousand euro from the bank. Okay, I'm sorry, 15,000 from the bank, and they charged you compound interest. Then, after two months, and you have now, of course, paid, no? after two months, they will charge you only the interest for the two months. You guys understand? So, you won't pay 15,000, um, 30,000, you will probably pay like, say, probably like 15 and a half thousand for that two months. You'll pay about five or six hundred. Then interest for those two months. But you guys understand? It also depends on the rate. Alright? That's it. But this kind of, huh? Anyway, the more uh, frequently uh, the interest is compounding, the more the borrower will benefit from the uh, balance reducing. Okay? As I said before, if you pay extra on a compound um, interest in the, um, uh, um, loan, the more you pay on inter, um, compound interest investment, um, uh, interest loan, it will benefit you in the long run. You will pay a less interest. Whereas on simple interest loan, the more you pay, you must pay hundred and ma a month extra every month. It's not going to make a difference on the total amount paid at the end. You guys understand? It will make a difference on on compound interest. Okay, did I read the first point? In simple interest loan agreement, yeah, I did not say that, I did say that. It's always better to amortize, the amortize is to pay in full, a loan in a short time period as possible. The longer you take to pay back the loan, the more interest you will pay in total. That's what I just explained to you now, okay. Usually the loan agreement apply compound interest to a loan, except for higher purchase, HP, which you studied in grade 10. In which simple interest rates are often very high, resulting in a large amount being paid in interest. Again, as I said, for, uh, for a inter simple interest, they calculate it on the principal value, and that is your amount that you need to um, settle. Okay. So we told that then, uh, this is an example on page? 86. Okay. We said, we are told that Lynn took um, sorry, then it takes out a loan of 300,000 at, at interest rate of 11% per annum compounded monthly. You must amortize, which means to say pay in full, you amortize the loan within five years with equal monthly payments starting in one month's time. That is in line with um, your compound interest. So that is, is fine. Then calculates monthly installment to be 6,522 rand and 73 cents. That's your ex value. Eh? If he pays the loan over five years. 
determine how much interest Len would pay under this agreement. So if you look at that for five years at a monthly fee. Okay. So the total he pays, the total is going to be 6,522 rand and 73 cents for five years monthly. The total he pays is um, 6522.73 times 5 times 12. Gives you um, 391,000. And then 191,363 uh, rand and uh, 86. Okay, so that's the total amount you pays. So to calculate the interest, to calculate your interest paid is going to be the total paid minus your principal or your loan amount. Okay, which gives you the loan amount was 300,000. So it's going to be 391, 363,80 minus 300,000. Give you a total of 91,363,86. That's the interest you will pay over five years. You guys understand? All right, let's look at the second part of the question. Number two. We are told. Then decides to pay 7,000. Yeah, this is a nice question. Then uh, uh, decides to pay 7,000 rand per month. Determine how long or how many payments of 7,000 rand must be made. Okay? So this is number two. So because it's a payment, it's going to be uh, your PV. The present value is going to be x into 1 minus 1 plus i to the minus n. All over time. What's the loan amount? 300,000. Um, equals x, which is 7,000 in this case now. So how much is he paying extra? He's paying uh, 478 rand. There are, no? Uh, 70, um, uh, 7 rand and some other sets. Okay? 1 minus 1 plus i. What's your i here? 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 1 over 12 to the exponent. Negative 12 times. And how many years is this for? That's what you're calculating. Not so. And this is all over i. Which is 0, 1, 1 over 12. Okay, so I'm just going to take this off. Put it somewhere. I might need it. That's not what we do with people in our lives, no? We just keep them somewhere until we need them. Most of the time we don't need them, no? Uh. Alright, so what do we do? Cross that one will go up. That goes down. I'm going to take the 1 over and I'm going to divide by the negative. Okay. I'm going to do all the steps in 1. So it's going to be, which implies, that's going to be 300,000. It goes up space here. Yeah? going to be 1 over 12. Then I'll cross multiply. <laughs> Divided by 7,000. Okay. So I'm going to fill this big bracket. Then I take the 1 over, it becomes minus 1. Then I'm going to fill the negative in time. It's going to be negative. And that is equal to. So what I do is, okay, equal to uh, 1 plus 0, 1, 1 over 12 to the exponent negative 12. Okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to now, let just put it here. Plus 0 0.11 over 12 to 
the exponent, you get the 12 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in this upper bit and this here. Okay? So it's going to be 1 plus 0 0.11 over 12. Gives me 1 to 1, 1. 1 to 1, 1 over 1, 2. Okay, and this is going to be negative upper brackets. Fraction 300,000. Multiply 0 0.11 over 12. Over 7,000. Minus 1. Use 17 over 28. Okay, we have this to the exponent, negative 2 out. Why did I do it like that? We want it in that form of the from exponential for us to convert to um, log easily. Okay, which now gives us negative 12n is equal to log 17 over 28 base 1 to 1 1 over 12 1. I'm going to divide by the negative as well, both sides. So I'm going to put that first in the calculator. That gives us negative log um, 17 over 28. Oops. And this is over log. So the answer huh? gives us. No, I'll do the same thing. One two one one over one thousand. I'm gonna give you fifty four comma six four. Is that correct? Fifty four comma six eight. Okay. But be before we go further into this, okay. I could have. Remember, I'm using that log rule, which says log a base b can be written as log a base c over log b base c. That's what I just did here, no? Otherwise, I could have put it in using this log button, which you guys are more familiar with. So it's negative. Base 1, 2, 1, 1, over 1,200. The number is 17 over 28. Give me the same answer. Okay. But just coming back to this, what's the, what is the question? The question says, how many... Determine how many payments of 7,000 must be made. So even though this could be very close to 55 payments, not so? If we, if we must round it, it will be 55 payments. But how many payment, full payments of 7,000 rand will be made? So therefore, 54 payments. Is that the answer they got there? Of 7,000. And then, the 50, fifth payment will be part of 7,000, won't be the whole amount. You guys understand? Okay. Right. So the next question says, determine the value of Lin's final payment. Okay, so his final payment, we must work out the balance outstanding. Not so important. How do you calculate balance outstanding? A minus FP. So what was the loan amount? 300,000 eh? into 1 plus 0, 11 percent compounded monthly and this is for how many, how many payments? That's 54 payments. There's 54 over 12 which gives you 54 minus FB which is X is 7,000 rand into 1 plus 0, 11 over 12 to the exponent. 12 times 54 over 12, which is 54 minus 1. And this is all over 12, which is 0, 0,11 over 12. People know that this answer should be a value less than 7,000. If it's a value more than 7,000, of course, we made a mistake somewhere. Okay. The exponent 54 minus 7,000 uh, into 1 plus 0, 0,11 over 12. Uh, to the exponent um, uh, 54 minus 1 
which is the zero point one millimeter. Is that correct? Four thousand seven hundred and fifty-four. Is that correct? What? Four thousand? Four thousand seven hundred and ninety-eight. Determine the value of this final payment. Balance of standing is three hundred thousand. It's a loan amount. Eleven percent compounded monthly. Starting one month's time. Is fifty four correct? Okay. So that's going to be three hundred thousand into one plus zero comma one one over twelve to the fifty four minus seven thousand. So x into one plus i to the exponent n minus one over i. What's the answer there? Four seven nine eight. Fifty five. Oh, I see. Okay. No, this is the balance. This is this is the balance at this is the balance after the fifty fourth payment. So it's four seven five four comma uh, nine two. That the, this is the balance. Then what happens to that? It's going to draw an interest for one month. Not so. So the last installment or payment will be four seven five four comma nine two. Um, into one plus i, which is zero comma one one over twelve, to the exponent one. So that answer into one plus zero comma one one over twelve to the exponent one. So four seven nine. Is that the answer? Yes. So four seven uh, nine eight comma. Uh, Fifty-one cents. Okay. Is that the answer, no? Yes. The last one I'll do it in Monday in the next video. With well, that, you should be able to do exercise nine, page eighty-four. Enjoy the rest of your day. Good afternoon, class. Okay. So the last question number four. We are asked to calculate how much then we save in terms of interest paid. By paying seven thousand rand instead of six thousand um, six thousand five hundred and twenty-two rand and seventy-three cents. Okay, so what we need to consider is we must calculate how much he paid in total. Okay, so he paid seven thousand rand. Okay, if, if, if that is what he's paying per month, okay, he would pay more if he has paid them. So the difference or the savings would be 6,522 rand and 73 cents. He's paying that for five years at the monthly uh, frequency. So that's the total amount he would have paid if he had paid the 6,500 rand. However, he's paying 7,000. How many? Um, 7,000 rands installments is he making? 54 of it. So 7,000 rand multiplied by 54. Remember that is 60 payments, no? So that is 54, which is this. Plus the final installment of 4,798 rand and 51 cents. Okay. So that gives us 6,000. 522 rand and 73 cents. Uh, 6,522 rand and 73 cents. Multiplied by 5, multiplied by 12. Minus, we had gone with the other option of 7,000 rand per month, so 7,000 times uh, 54 months. Plus the final installment. So it has a difference of 8,565 rand. 8,565 rand and 29 cents. Okay, so 
as you can see, by paying, I think we will calculate it to be approximately uh, 500, uh, 470 something and extra, you're actually saving 8,000, 8,500, so 8,565 and 29 cents, and you are paying um, six months less, okay, in total basically. Alright, so with that you should be able to do exercise 9 on page 87. Okay, and that brings us to the end of financial maths. Alright.